hello and welcome. Uh, this is John Thorngall and Emily Ritter's presentation on Merton's five individual modes of adaptation. Uh, before we begin talking about the modes, a little context is required. So Merton's strain theory focuses on the idea that humans are inherently goal-seeking creatures. We strive to achieve our goals, sometimes legitimately, sometimes illegitimately. When we're prevented from achieving our goals, we experience a strain and cope with that in five different methods, some of which involve crime, others don't. Namely, the first one, uh, conformity. Now, the classic conformist is what makes up the backbone of American society. These people accept society's cultural goals uh, for Merton, that was the American dream of becoming wealthy, of pulling yourself up from your bootstraps and getting big. And these people seek the American dream through law-abiding and legitimate ways, like a middle-class uh, middle individual who graduates high school, goes to college to find a higher-paying job, achieves it, and buys a house and starts a family. Or a Chinese immigrant who comes to America in the hopes of finding a better life for his family, opens a restaurant, and becomes successful, earning money for his kids to go to college and for him to live comfortably. In the 19th century, they were homesteaders. They moved across the country into the Wild West to find a better life or gold. And businessmen like Bill Gates, who exploded into the global scene, becoming one of the richest men alive from his humble origins. Now, moving on, we have what many people think of as the classic criminal, the innovator. They accept society's cultural goals, but don't accept the legitimate means of acquiring them. These are the people you see selling drugs on the streets or selling counterfeit goods like Prada and Rolex watches. They believe that selling heroin is more profitable than flipping hamburgers. And in many cases, they're right. This occurs not only at the lower levels of the society, but at the top with very successful businessmen like Bernie Madoff, who created perhaps the largest Ponzi scheme in history. When it failed, it cost the global economy billions of dollars. Moving on from that, we have ritualists who don't accept society's cultural goals, but they do accept the legitimate means of achieving them. Now, these are people that often come from low-income situations, like coal workers who know that they can't get ahead, they'll be stuck in a fairly low-wage position for the rest of their lives, but they do it anyway because they have to, to support their family. Uh, these are people that are going through the motions of life, uh, like uh, an office worker, a bureaucrat, who realizes their career is stagnated and instead focuses on enforcing the rules, sometimes at the cost of productivity. Uh, moving on from that, we have retreatists who accept not, uh, neither cultless goals of society or the legitimate means of achieving them. Uh, these people give up. They retreat into their own worlds, like heroin addicts or drug addicts who reject American society and instead uh, chase the dragon, just seek to get high at any price. And they'll rob stores to get drug money, but they're different from the next method of coping, which are rebels. They're similar to Achetis, but instead of just rejecting society's goals, they replace them with their own. 
Uh, an example that nearly everyone is familiar with, with are the Amish. Um, they rejected modern society and instead formed their own communities based on Puritan ideals. Or the San Francisco hippies of Haight-Ashbury district in the 1960s who rejected the consumerist American culture with one of communal living and free love. Now, that's all five modes of adaptation. Hope this has been helpful. And that is 